I waited almost a year to do this review. This is Alfa Romeo Giulia, the car which is supposed to show the Germans how luxury sedans should look and feel. In a Super Bowl ad, Alfa Romeo says goodbye to predictability. Indeed, living with the Giulia does come with some unpredictability. Some for the right reasons and some for less right reasons. Let's start with the obviously good stuff. Unless you're a dentist, you're bound to love the looks. Giulia has a lot of rounded features. You won't mistake it for sharp German lines or boxy American cars. But at the same time, Alfa Romeo designers have not overdone it. They did exactly enough to make this car stand out without being ostentatious. Even in the diesel version, you start your Giulia with a starter button on the steering wheel. Now, I've seen plenty of Giulia Quadrifoglio reviews, but I did not expect this to be carried over to the standard car. It's a little thing, but it makes you feel special. Steering is also very special, maybe on the light side, but it's very responsive and very precise. Take a Giulia for a test drive and any comparable German saloon will feel boring. A beautiful Italian will get your pulse up every time. Also the suspension will get your pulse up, because it's set up for sporty driving, you'll feel every bump. But assuming you want sporty characteristics, this is what you're going to get. Interestingly, I don't feel Giulia is fast, or maybe I just want to drive it quicker. Anyway, pay attention to the speedo needle, because you may be driving way over the speed limit. Speaking of speed limits, there is no traffic sign recognition, there is no real-time traffic information either, and the display, as nice as it may seem at first, is pretty much good only to put a suction cup on it to mount your smartphone. We'll get to that in a moment. This is an 8-speed automatic and it goes through the first 4 or 5 gears so fast you'll be in 5th around 60 km per hour. I guess it has to do with fuel economy. Alpha promises 4.2 liters per 100 km combined. I think 8 is more realistic unless you drive in advanced efficiency mode. Then you may go down as low as 7. Speaking of advanced efficiency, Alpha's DNA modes used to be called Dynamic, Normal and All Weather, but now A stands for Advanced Efficiency, or as my friend calls it, Anemic Mode. And I think he's right, because even in Normal Mode, with the 2.2 liter 180 horsepower diesel, the Giulia doesn't feel particularly sporty. I have no clue where all the Italian stallions are hiding, or how they manage to dilute 450 newton meters of torque. But there are at least optional paddle shifters. In a BMW you get these tiny plastic cheap things and here you get half a meter of Italian aluminum. Unfortunately, shifting gears in manual, dynamic, whatever mode, it doesn't really matter. You might just as well put the car in automatic and enjoy it like that. By the way, electronic stability control and traction control cannot be switched off. Computer intervenes and you feel it, although I never saw a yellow light flash on the dashboard. I suspect engineers did not want to annoy customers who bought a rear-wheel drive car and now cannot own their friends who own BMWs. Let's get back to the advanced efficiency mode for a minute. You can't use it unless the temperature outside is below 15 degrees Celsius. Why? because AC in the Giulia works barely or it doesn't work at all. With just 22-23 degrees outside, you have to set climate control as low as 17 degrees inside to get the car cool enough. And of course, the fan is working overtime as if a plane was about to take off. And then you stop at the lights, stop and start cuts the engine and AC goes into not at all mode. A dozen or so seconds later, the engine comes on again and the fan is even louder. There's another reason why you want to turn stop and start off. Vibration on the engine shut off and start is unbelievable. 
In some cars you can't tell if the engine is on or off, but FCA still managed to produce a car with annoyingly loud diesel which vibrates like a rail crossing keeper's home as a freight train rolls by. Another minor annoyance, you can temporarily disable stop and start system by pressing a button over your left knee. Restart the car and stop and start will be on again, and that's normal. Right next to it is the parking sensors button. Switch parking sensors off and they stay off until you manually turn them on again. Why would you turn off parking sensors, you may ask? Well, because they are too sensitive in traffic and there is no temporary off switch on the infotainment screen. Speaking of the screen, I said earlier it's good for attaching a smartphone to it. Once you start the car, SatNav sometimes needs a couple of minutes to realize where you are. Backup camera has resolution and aspect ratio like in an early color screen mobile phone. I'm sure there's a better way to make use of almost 9 inch screen. That being said, the infotainment system is actually quite intuitive, especially if you've used BMW's iDrive in the past. Some models also get a touch panel on top of the selector wheel. Anything else looking familiar? Yes, the automatic gearbox shifter looks like it's been taken out of a BMW. To charge a phone, you have to run the cable all the way from under the armrest to where you're going to damage it one day with the lid. Fortunately, there are also some USB ports, including an optional one in the back, but even if you use the ones under the armrest, you'll have to run them outside because the smartphone won't fit down there. An induction charger? Forget it. Glove box is also rather small, but I generally like the cockpit design. Interior quality is good, seats could offer better lateral support, but it's not a deal breaker. Speaking of seats, you can assign memory positions only when the car is stopped. I couldn't find, also in the manual, a setting which would prevent the seat from sliding back when you open the door. Remember about it if you want to carry something delicate behind the driver's seat. Alfa Romeo Giulia is pretty much the same size as Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Therefore, you should not expect too much legroom in the back. Space is adequate for two adult passengers, but with the big tunnel running through the middle, you don't want to be the third person sitting here. From the back seat, you can open the middle part of the backrest to carry longer items, but in order to fold the side seats, you have to look inside the boot. While looking for the boot release button, I also noticed the hood release lever, and I won't say another word about it. You can also open the boot with a remote control or with a button on the lid as long as you find the right one, because there are two and one of them is for locking the doors. Why not place it inside here like everyone else? I don't know. At 480 liters, the boot is on par with the competition, but the opening is rather small, so putting larger items in and taking them out is a bit... a bit of a hassle. And then there is the sound of the lid closing. The cheapest 2.2 liter 136 horsepower Giulia costs 33,000 euro. A comparable Audi A4 costs 35 grand. BMW 316D 35,000 and Mercedes C Class 36,000 euro. This 180 horsepower Giulia Super costs 40,000 euro and has another 10 grand or so worth of options on it. A similarly spec BMW 320D will set you back 55,000, a difference you may not notice in your monthly leasing fee. Journalists around the world praise Giulia Quadrifoglio because it leaves BMW M3 far behind in its tire smoke. In a 510 horsepower car, you don't pay attention to practicality because that's not what that kind of a car is for. Unfortunately, ordinary people like me and you buy cars to drive every day, not to set fast lap times. Giulia is a great car to eat up motorway miles. It looks good, but it's full of minor annoyances which should not exist at this price point. 
And what do you think about Alfa Romeo Giulia? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, please help me make more reviews like this by donating to Patreon or PayPal. Links in the description below. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.